Hey, welcome back again to Lee Writing and Pronunciation on YouTube. Uh, in this video, we're going to cover something that you've all wanted for a long time. How to create beats on a beat board in Final Draft. Um, you, and you can also use this, you know, freehand if you want to make your own beat board and like post them up on the wall. You, you can use the same kind of concept. But of course, if you have Final Draft, it makes the whole thing easier because you can do it right on the computer. You don't have to manually write anything down. Now, what is a beat board? Um, basically, it's a board that outlines all of the important scenes in your screenplay. Like you'd write like a, f a few sentences and assign it to a board. You know, in real life, you'd use an index card and put it on a board. But here you have like virtual sticky notes you put on the beat board. And, and in that sticky note, you'll just, uh, you know, have a couple sentences that describe the scene that takes place on a certain page. Uh, maybe it's a, an important scene. You want to, like, have that scene come in by a certain page number, like page 10 or page 20. Or you can, you can determine when Act 2 and Act 3 are going to be in your screenplay. So you'll choose, um, you know, you'll outline which page number Act 2 is going to be in and Act 3 and so on. Um, you know, it's just a way to sort out your, your story so you, you get the important plot points in by a certain time in the screenplay, by page 20 or page 30, let's say. Because, you know, in scripts you have to keep the action going quickly, so you don't want to keep waiting too long to get to the, the good stuff. You want to have them come quick, or, you know, the plot twists and so on. So you you got to organize when that's going to happen. And the beat board basically helps you organize the flow of the story. And, you know, that's pretty much it. So what we're going to do is, uh, in Final Draft, you go to Views, and then you click Beat Board like this to get to the beat board. Um, if you want to use the classic view mode, you, you know, this, where it has the uh, toolbar up here, you can do that. Uh, you would just go to view and then beat board there. If you want to go back to the script, you just do that. But I like the ribbon view better, so it goes switch to ribbon view. I like that one. All right, so now we got to get back to the beat board. Uh, oh yeah, you can also do it here, view, beat board, or you can go home, beat board. I'll stick to the home. Beat board, okay. Now we also want to have uh, the story map. There. Now this shows you the page numbers of your screenplay. Now I, in that screenplay I wrote tw like 25 pages, so it goes up to 25. Um, and then down here we'll create the beats, and then we assign the beats to the page numbers there. So, okay, double click to create a beat. So double click. Now what's the title of the beat going to be? Let's say... Uh, there's an important scene, like a wedding scene. So wedding scene, that's the header title of the of the scene. And then you could say um, Ben shows up at the wedding and declares his love for Barbara. <laughs> Maybe interrupts the wedding. Okay, interrupts, you know, like in The Graduate, with Dustin Hoffman interrupts the wedding, I don't know. Then interrupts the wedding and declares his love for Barbara. Okay, let's say we want to have that happen at uh, page 10. Okay, page 10. So, I'll click off of there. Okay, then we want that to come up and go to page 10. Ah, move it over there. Okay. See, a, oh, like a little diamond shows up. Also, we can change the color of this right click and then go to like green or something. Just to make sure, just to have different colors. Okay, so wedding scene, that represents page 10. Oh yeah, you put your cursor over there. It shows you the same thing. Wedding scene, then it interrupts the wedding and declares his love for Barbara. Um, and if you move this like over here, it moves it over back if you double click on the diamond so like and then double click and then it brings it back it helps you sort things out um so then you um say create another scene double click once again all right create the title 
let's say, um, Ben, um, no, let's see, dumping scene. <laughs> Barbara dumps Ben and gets in, uh, engaged to Steve. Stop the top of my head. <laughs> and, okay, get, change that to blue. So, like, let's say we want to make that page five there. Let's say it says there page goal five, page goal ten. That's to remind you that by the time you get to page 5, you have to have this scene complete. By the time you get to page 10, you have to have this scene complete. Um, if you don't, then, I mean, you, again, you can move this around if you want to change the, the goal. But try to keep it within the goal that you originally set. So the flow is better. Okay. And then you just do something like that. Okay, now, let's say you want to create a new act, you know, like, something that represents a really big change, like a really big, like, like you finalize the end of a certain scene or a, certain, uh, or a certain segment, and then you want to introduce a new segment or a new act. So, you uh, double-click, oh, sorry, sorry, no, get this out of here, delete, right click and left click on new structure point see how the border has like a thicker blue this is a different kind of beat that represents you know, like a big change in the in the script or, or in the story so you can just put let's say act two and capitalize that and um, Ben and Barbara run off, uh, start, yeah, run off together and start their uh, unofficial honeymoon. <laughs> totally off the top of my head. And we can say that happens at page 15. <clears throat> oh, yeah, that, this is what comes up for a structure point. It's like a square with a line. Um, you know, if this were a real screenplay, like a full length, it would be like 90 pages, but yeah, you get the idea. And, and these would probably be spread out more in a real screenplay. But this is just an example. Um, okay, so you basically get the idea. And if you want to create a new beat by right-clicking, you can also right-click and then left-click on new beat and do that. Um, okay, now let's go back to the story map. Let's say you want to have a goal for how long your script's going to be. So with the story map activated, you put your cursor up here, you right-click, and then change target script length. Now this is where you can say, let's, let's say you're writing a full script. You want to have a length of 90 pages to be your target. So you go there. Now look what happens. See, this is the end. And this is what's been written so far in the example script that I uploaded. 25 pages. So that this all means that I have that I have to fill all of these pages to reach my goal to 90. Um, you can still move, you know, these around to the pages that you haven't written yet. Let's say you want to have a wedding scene at page 46 or 45. Yeah, I don't know then you can move it there. Even though this doesn't exist yet, you can still have the goal. Um, in fact, this is what you're going to do in the beginning of your script. But in a normal situation, you'd open up a blank document and then open up the beat board and then start putting all your notes in there before you even write anything on the normal script. That way you have everything outlined. And then once you begin writing your script, you can do this. You can have the uh, the beat notes next to the script by going to vertical, like this. Watch. This is going to load or something. Come on. Oh, sorry. You go to page. There you go. Yeah, this is very important. It, tr it kind of tricks you. You have to switch this, too, and then go to page. Okay. 
So you have script here, and you have the notes here. And, and the story map still stays the full length, which is kind of cool. That helps you out a lot. So basically, you can write your script on the left side while looking on your, at your beat notes on the right side. It's kind of convenient. You know, you can just focus on what you're doing there. Look at where you are, see where you are in the page, and it, it just makes everything easier. And of course, you can do a horizontal view too, but ugh, that one's, yeah, no. <laughs> Vertical is better. Uh, so, all right, let's go back to unsplit, take that away. And of course, if you want to take away the beat board altogether, you just click on that again, or sorry, click on page again. And then it takes it away. Beatboard brings it back. Um, oh, let's, okay, let's say you go over the limit of your target. So let me change the limit again. Let's say I will only want my script to be 20 pages. So 20, okay. Now look what happens. These red numbers here, these are all the pages that I went over. Five pages over, see that? So you would just, that would just warn you. It doesn't prevent you from writing anything more. It just makes the numbers red. That's it to let you know. So you can just um, either delete pages, rewrite the story, or change the target length again. Back to 25. Whatever you want to do. But, but if you have a, if you have a target, you should stick to it and not change it too much. Um, it, it just makes sense because otherwise, You'll be too sloppy if you keep changing things all the time. <clears throat> all right. I think that covers everything. Uh, yeah, I think I covered it all. So, yeah. That's all there is to storyboards or, or beat board. Well, you can call them storyboards. They're actually storyboards, but they call it beat boards. That's the hip professional terminology. Um... But the, I, I don't always use them. I mean, I, unless I'm writing like a really, you know, sophisticated story or something complex, then I'll use it. Otherwise, I'll just have a treatment or a synopsis and, you know, write my script based on that. That, that works just as fine. But, you know, the professional Hollywood people would use beat boards, of course. Uh, I don't consider myself at that level. It's okay. Uh, it's not necessary. I mean, not everyone who writes a script uses a beat board. I mean, even in the in the old days when they used to freehand scripts, they didn't use beat boards. They just had a notepad and a pen, and then they wrote on it, and that was the script. I mean, didn't, didn't Stallone do that for Rocky? He just wrote on, like, a legal pad or something? Um, you know, but if you want to be more organized, I guess beat, beat boards uh, would be the way to go. Anyway, uh, about almost 14 minutes now, so that should be enough on beat boards. Um, hope this uh, gave you a good idea of what to do. And again, if you want to just make this yourself without using Final Draft, get a big uh, bulletin board or pinup board, and you know, kind of like what I have in the background there on my wall, where you can stick papers to it, but instead stick uh, index cards to it. And then write, write on the index card uh, the page number of the script that you want the scene to be written by. Uh, you know, like page goal up there. Just write that on the index card. And then post them up on a board like that. Yeah, that, that can work too. All right. That's if you're really old school. If you're, Chances are you're not going to do that unless you don't want to buy Final Draft. It's up to you. Um, but anyway, that's enough, uh, enough of that. Subscribe, and I'll go back to pronunciation videos very soon. Thank you.